everyone, my name is Sarah Dietschy, Rhymes with Peachy, and I love Apple MagSafe, I do. Well, sometimes. So today we have Apple's new MagSafe battery pack, as well as the Anchor version that is, well, half the price. And I also use the iPhone mini for, I would say like eight months. And I recently just switched to the Pro Max for reasons I will expand on later, but you're probably like, yeah, you just want a better battery life. So the theme of this video is battery. So we'll talk about why and how MagSafe actually functions differently on both of these phones. So I think we should just start with unboxing this and get into it. I lost my knife in the move and this is a, uh, well, very aggressive unboxing knife that you don't even need for Apple products, I, I forget. Okay, so that goes into like top three, uh, least graceful unboxings that I've ever done. So don't open this you know, upside down. Okay, it comes with a small amount of literature, no Apple stickers. And here we go, here's the $99 iPhone MagSafe battery pack. Okay, so hopefully it has a decent charge, but I'm just gonna plug it in here with a lightning cable. That is the only port that it has. And then we might as well get it out of the way, unbox Anchor's version of this MagSafe charger, which is $50 instead of 99. Their slogan is charge fast, live more. That's super inspiring. Oh, see, I okay, so I unboxed this right side up and it was upside down, I'm glad. It wasn't as, uh, wasn't as bad as the MagSafe charger. Okay, so this one uh, also comes with a USB-C cable, which is nice. The MagSafe doesn't come with any cables. Oh, this one actually feels pretty similar, kind of that soft, rubbery plastic vibe. So if you can see on the Anchor battery pack, it actually has an external LED indicator of how much charge you have left, and it has this button, and then it also has USB-C. USB-C? Lightning. And so this is really nice when you plug it in to charge it, you can see how many dots you have to go. I have two out of the four dots to go. So we're gonna let both of these charge and let's let's just get into the details. So this battery pack has a 1,460 milliamp hour battery. Now there's actually some teardown videos out there now which shows two battery cells with an overall voltage of 7.62 volts, which means it should actually be able to supply more power than that 1460 number in the specs. The light port that you can find on the bottom is only used for charging the battery pack. You can't put in a lightning cable to an iPhone and charge it that way. So the only way that you're going to use the MagSafe battery pack is to stick it on the back of your iPhone and it can wirelessly charge like that, as you can see. Apple's battery pack charges your iPhone at five volts, which is, yeah, really slow. However, the iPhone mini already overheats pretty easily when you're either using the MagSafe puck. That was a really slow face ID. When you're either using uh, the MagSafe, it sometimes overheats and then the screen will go down if you're watching any videos or something like that. So um, I imagine you wouldn't want that to happen when you're charging with this and also using your phone. Uh, so that's good for that, I guess. But initial reports are saying that if you're using your iPhone while you're charging with this MagSafe charger, you're actually not going to increase the percentage of your battery that much at all. Uh, all it can do is just sustain the battery percentage that you're at at the moment. And then if you have a pro device like this Pro Mag, Max or the normal pro phone, well, your battery is just going to continue to go down if you're doing something intensive like gaming or watching a YouTube video. And I know I'm jumping forward as to why I switched from the mini to the pro max, but yes, it was because battery life. I was just out and about more. Uh, I'm running more things. I'm answering more emails. I have notifications actually turned on in my phone and I'm driving out and about and I wasn't able to charge my mini iPhone in my Tesla via the wireless charging pads because it was too short. So I just wasn't charging my phone until I got a little thing that I could put to make it to make it bigger so it did charge. But in that week where I wasn't charging this mini in the car and wow, I'm saying charging so many times in this video. Well, my phone would be dead by like 2 or 3 p.m., which just wasn't an option. Like I use my phone to get a lot of things done. And turns out this past year in New York when I was just staying inside and doing nothing. And I mean, I, you know, I've been working, but I can 
hit the charge on my wireless pad every now and then when I'm just staying in one place. But when you're out and about, it's harder to keep a charge. And I started to notice, wow, the mini battery isn't going to cut it. And with all that said, my only other pet peeve was the overheating. So we're in Texas now, y'all, and it gets really hot. So even now it's 100 degree days, but in the 80 to 90 degree days in the car, in and out of places, my phone's display would dim a ton and there's nothing you can do until it can you know cool off so that was just kind of annoying and this guy never overheats and it has a great battery and guys like trust me i would stick with the mini for the rest of time i love this size like look at the comparison in my hands like this is like i have a mini ipad with me and it lasted me a solid eight months but yeah that's why i'm now on the pro max but wow i kind of derailed the MagSafe conversation, but don't worry, we're coming back to that. Oh my gosh, I did it again. <laughs> okay. So because there is no button to check how the charging is going on the Apple battery pack, you basically have to wait until this light turns green and that's when you know it is fully charged. So I'm gonna wait until these are fully charged and we're gonna do a full on test. I have two of them and we're gonna see how fast it charges with a mini and a pro max. So we're gonna let it charge for 10 minutes and we'll see how much the battery increases. Uh, yeah, you know what? Not the best, but I wasn't expecting a lot because the initial impressions on Twitter were, were pretty brutal. But I, I've always been really excited for this product because I hate dealing with cables and a separate battery pack that isn't attached to my phone when I'm on the go. You know, a cab in New York, uh, an Uber here, or even airplanes. I haven't been on an airplane in a while. But when I was traveling twice a month, every single month, uh, I would always use that smart battery case, which they haven't made for the iPhone 12, which I am so sad about. But what you have to consider here, why haven't they made that smart battery case? Well, it's because guess what guys, this is one step closer to iPhone's portless future. Ooh, no port on the iPhone yet. I don't want that, but I'm afraid to say it might be coming. So this allows you to charge your iPhone without any ports and you might say, well, hey, it's a little bit too slow though. Well, you can also charge your iPhone when it's plugged into like this 20 watt brick charge it like this. It's basically like a fancier, bigger version of the MagSafe puck, right? There you go, you're charging your iPhone without a cable, right? And that smart battery case has a lightning adapter at the end of it, so you still have to plug in your phone, which doesn't match with that portless iPhone future. Which yeah, I'm not ready for that. I don't want that. That scares me. I'm not gonna be comparing this to a normal battery bank that you just plug your phone in with a lightning cable. Uh, if you want a lot of capacity, if you want a fast charge, just get one of those. I have like five different ones. I'm a big fan of a few. I'll put my affiliate links down in the description. If you need one of those, I also have a cool charging base thing that I just bought, which is awesome. I'll, I'll put that link in the description below as well if you're interested in all things charging. But yeah, another great thing about this Anchor battery pack is yes, it uses USB-C. Wow, I wish we could charge our iPhones using USB-C, maybe one day guys, um, but you can take a USB-C cable out of this battery pack and charge anything with it, um, unlike you know the Apple one. Also, uh, you can't charge this Apple battery pack by placing it on top a, of a Qi wireless charger. So I can't take this MagSafe puck, put it on the MagSafe logo and charge it like that. That's, that doesn't work. However, what if we did this? Oh, it works. It's charging. So you can charge your Qi wireless charger via Qi wireless charging. Dang it. Okay, so this is almost better in like every single way. <laughs> Here's maybe one thing that's better about the Apple MagSafe is it is a bit lighter and a bit thinner. 
if you can see here, but only by a few, a few millimeters. And I can already tell just my first 10 minutes with these guys. Uh, it's kind of like the weird thing where black cars show more dirt than white cars for some reason. Uh, the, the black charger is already showing more smudges than actually the Apple one, which um, is again surprising because you would think the white would show. This will probably discolor more as time goes on, but just the, the smudges, just like the iPad cases that we showed in the last video, um, the smudges definitely show more on this Anchor uh, black version. If you can see here on the side of the Anchor uh, battery pack, you have all of this like legal writing and logos and stuff. That's something that you forget about Apple products. Somehow they get around that. And it really is just a beautiful, clean puck with absolutely no writing anywhere. You know, if you're that minimalistic type, then obviously, yeah, this guy. 50 more dollars. Okay, so at this point, a lot of you are kind of like, okay, well, what's the point? Why'd you make this video, Sarah? So the Apple purists, they're gonna spend the extra $50, go with this guy. Oh, it's so pretty. It looks great. However, this obviously way more functional. <laughs> I meant to say functional. Way more bang for your buck. However, if you wanna just use this as an extension of basically MagSafe, it actually does charge faster when you use it as a MagSafe charger. So you use the 20 watt brick and you plug it in like this, charge your iPhone like that. And then if you take it a step further and you take one of your MacBook chargers, it's the 61 watt uh, MacBook charger, and you use your USB-C to lightning cable, plug it into that, well, you're gonna get an even faster charge when you charge your iPhone like that. So doing that same 10 minute charge test with the Anchor battery pack, it added 10% battery onto the mini starting at 28%, which as you can tell is only 1% more than the Apple one did. So the Anchor battery pack doesn't charge much faster, but it does have more juice to charge your phone longer. So there are several ways to use your MagSafe battery pack, but I think this presents uh, probably the biggest problem. MagSafe is super cool. I like it, I, I, I really do. When it comes to these different MagSafe accessories, it is definitely the more convenient option. But I think where MagSafe will get really cool down the line is when it's not only the more convenient option, but it's the better option. You know, maybe it charges as fast or at least close. I don't know if it'll ever get faster than an actual like wired charge, but also I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about the actual magnets. So when I use the iPhone mini as my daily driver, I did not get all of the hate with the Apple wallet, the MagSafe wallet. Uh, basically, snaps on the back of your iPhone and this doesn't move. I would keep it in the back pocket, my front pocket. I would pull it in and out of my pocket all the time and it is perfect. It would never fall off. I keep three cards in there and this was literally one of my all time favorite iPhone accessories. As you can see, uh, the yellow uh, leather version kind of like patinas a lot. Um, it definitely got kind of um, dirty. And on the mini, this accessory looks awesome. It's just perfect with the size, uh, comes on and off not too easily. And then if we go over to this Pro Max, well, I think it does look a little bit more goofy because it doesn't fill up the entire frame of the iPhone, but that's not the most important part. The most important part is I don't know if it's just because it doesn't have the edges to hang on here. Maybe the batteries are uh, just the way they're configured on the mini, they're stronger. I don't know, but I had zero issues on the mini. And when I started using this on the Pro Max and pulling it in and out of my pocket, Guys, after three days of trying to use it, I couldn't. I like I have to buy a wallet or something, like a normal human adult wallet, because um, I would be out to eat, I would be in the car, and my wallet would just be left behind in the car. My wallet would be left behind in a restaurant booth. Like there are several times that I have lost my three most important cards because this just wouldn't stay on the back of the iPhone in my pocket. But this just shows that MagSafe has not arrived. I love it, but it needs to get back.
better. Somehow these magnets need to get stronger because I want to stick everything on the back of the iPhone. I want all of those cool MagSafe phone accessories where you just hang your iPhone, uh, but I don't trust it at this point. But I so am excited for the future of MagSafe. It's sad because the iPhone mini in almost every aspect is just perfect and I wish I could go back to this guy, um, but it's only because of the battery. And well, hey, maybe I should just uh, throw one of these guys on the back of the mini and maybe I would be fine, maybe. But this actual battery pack doesn't stay on the mini as well as the wallet. Obviously, the wallet is so much lighter and thinner, but even using it, um, it actually does feel like a good grip, but occasionally it'll just, it just won't stay completely aligned with um, the iPhone. Yeah, so MagSafe, am I right guys? Comment down below what you think. Let me know if you like this video, hit the subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And until next time, everyone, Stay peachy. Okay, bye.